example from, uh, from a cave wall inside the game. And what we've actually done is developed a way to basically take thousands of polygons and simulate it with just a few polygons by generating normal maps and using uh, real-time shaders to actually process that normal map and turn it into a, a light, uh, lighting information. So if I draw a render region here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn off a layer. Right now we get this gray box in front of us. There we go. So this is what a normal map looks like, or this is what the normals would look like with our normal shader. Um, basically every polygon has a direction, and that direction is, is a normal. Uh, it's just what direction is that polygon facing. If I go ahead and open up a light rig here, you can see I can move around the light. And really what makes us think, or what makes us perceive that this is 3D, is the way that the, the levels of gray or color, whatever, are changing as we move the light source. Uh, if they're all moving consistently, it really wouldn't look 3D, but this gives us that effect. But what we can actually do is bake into a texture map all of this information, all of these colors, which will then define what direction that polygon is facing. It sounds a little complicated, but when you uh, watch the procedure, I hope it'll all make sense. So what I'm going to do is put this, uh, put this one by one grid in front of it. It's a single polygon. What we're going to then do is run a little add-on that uh, ships with every version of XSI. You can get this today. Uh, and it's a normal map generator. It's under the GPU surface effects inside of our add-on um, area in the net view. So we're just going to go ahead and click Setup. And all you really have to do is take all of your high-res models, all of these objects, and put them on a layer called High Resolution. And then you select your object that you put in front of it or around it. Uh, in this case, it's just a flat object. But this could be a character. It could be 360. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to uh, be a flat object. Uh, think of this as like Silly Putty. Basically, it's going to stick on there and peel off all that normal map data. And to do that, you just click Apply and then set a couple parameters. I'm not going to generate the surface map. Uh, we'll go ahead and up the resolution to 1024 and just go ahead and click Generate Maps. And this is going to launch our Render Map technology. And again, it's just it, Render Map. All it does is bake texture information. Uh, in the past, what we would use Render Maps for primarily is if you had a wall, uh, say you had a brick wall texture, just a very basic unlit brick wall, and you shine the light on it, and you wanted to have that lighting information into your game or into your, uh, your texture map. Basically, that's all it does. Here, what we're doing is we're baking those normal maps. Uh, so now that I can see my, uh, my effect is done, I'm going to go into my, uh, my render tree and go ahead and switch into real-time shader mode. If I go ahead and update my render tree, select my object, we can see that all we have right now is a Lambert shader. This is a, the render tree is primarily used, or was primarily used for doing ray trace rendering. Um, it's our connection for all of our ray trace inputs. We also have a real-time node here. So I'm gonna go to my material presets and apply a real-time shader. So the one I want here is bump diffuse map with specular lighting. I'm just gonna go ahead and drag and drop, drag and drops all throughout XSI. And you can see what happened right away is this changed to a different texture and a different uh, normal map on there. You need to go ahead and actually assign the textures that we just created to this to make the effect uh, look correctly. So first I'm just going to go and grab the, um, the proper texture map for the, for the wall, which is in, uh, let me go into my D drive here, actually my U drive, my valve drive, and grab the proper texture for the wall. So this is just a, pla a plain standard 2D texture. And now we're going to come down here and grab the normal map. So we'll say File, New, and just grab the normal map we just generated. And check this out. This is one single polygon. If I grab my, uh, my light rig, this is where it really gets wild. Check that out. That's a single polygon. We took 20,000 polygons, is what made up that brick wall, and took it and turned it into basically one. So we can get incredibly detailed environments now without having the, the graphics card having to draw all those triangles, which of course kills your frame rate. So this is, uh, this is all over. It's even on the characters, correct? Oh, yeah, it's on some of the characters. Cool. So you get just amazing lighting information. All the, uh, all the environments are mapped. And uh, I'm just going to go really quickly into uh, an older version of actually the Half-Life engine and just show you, uh, show you the cave wall actually running in the game. So we'll come over here and just load up the map. And there we go. Take a sec to load here. And there we go. So if I just kind of walk over, navigate my character there, there you go. There's the same wall, entirely normal map. So you can turn on your little flashlight, move this all around, and the lighting information is now accurate and correct. It's very, very cool technology. And uh, with that, I think we're about finished, huh? So um, I just wanted to end up with, a, we've solved a lot of uh, things that we think were holding us back from making the kind of art that we wanted to have in a game. But one thing that still needs to be addressed is that uh, um, we have a huge mod community, and it's something that we really like to support. And the demands are kind of higher now in terms of animation. And um, so I think there's a real opportunity for artists and animators that maybe have not thought about doing mods before. There's a lot of people out there looking for good artists and animators to work with. And it's a great way to work with people all around the world. So I encourage all of you to, 
to see about getting involved in that. You can, uh, you can today, go download, if you don't have XSI, go download the Experience CD. It's a free download. You can start building models. You can start animating, learning how to do it. You know, in Half-Life ships, uh, again, there's this rumor that's floating around that there'll be a version that'll let you actually take that work and dump it into the, uh, the Half-Life 2 game. So you'll be able to develop your own characters, create your own environments. Very, very cool. So some good stuff to look forward to. Buy yourself some big speakers, get a new computer, and uh, spend a couple months playing a game. Very cool. Thank you, Bill. So thanks for coming. I'll be around for a while if uh, you want to come up and talk to me.